In this video, I'm going to assume you already have an idea for your Physics IA, and I will help you start the process of writing it, designing it, and getting ready to collect your data. So just as a recap, you should already have chosen one independent variable that you're going to manipulate or change in your experiment. Just one. More is not better. Likewise, you should have one dependent variable that you're going to measure. Now, some people might say a uh, controlled variable, those are all the things that need to be kept constant. This does sound a little funny, a constant variable. It's kind of like a cold hot dog. What we want you to do is think about anything that could affect your experiment. We would want everything to be kept the same. You're controlling them. Now, in a previous video, I came up with the idea using the double refraction you see here in the picture. I'm told that this double refraction will happen when two different polarizations of light will end up having different index of refraction. So I was suggesting for an idea that my independent variable would be I'd change the wavelength of the light coming in because I know that normally wavelengths do affect the index of refraction. That's how we get dispersion. And what I would measure is the distance between the two different refraction patterns. And I'd like to see whether or not the wavelength would actually cause a different amount of refraction. So what kind of things am I going to need to be controlled? Well, the thickness of that calcium calcite is going to have to be the same. I'm going to have to use the same images every single time. And I should have the same intensity of the wavelength and anything else you might be able to think of that would affect my results. Also, as a quick check, for your physics IA, you must have quantitative data. That means your measurements will have a number value. So when you analyze it, we're going to be able to make x, y, or scatter graphs. If you have qualitative data, such as if I wrote down the color of the light rather than the actual wavelength, then I would be making bar charts, and that's not going to allow me to have sophisticated enough analysis with my data. One more thing that I think is really important is to make a chart for your controlled variables. Now this is not required, but I find that if you don't do this, there are maybe some things you should be controlling and are not. It is enough that if you have a well-described method in which your variables are shown to be controlled, it is sufficient, but I do recommend making this chart. So these are the variables I need to control. In my example, the thickness of the calcite. Why should it be controlled? Well, the light will travel different distances and then would have an effect on the difference between where the two images lie. How will I control them? I'll use the same crystal throughout my method. I would suggest that you probably will have three controlled variables. It may be more. It depends on your method. What we don't want you to see, though, is you writing many, many variables here with the idea that more is better. We want to make sure they do have a effect on our independent or dependent variable. For example, you don't need to tell me to stand on only my left foot when using a ruler. So if you have a good independent variable and dependent variable that are both quantitative and you've thought about your controlled variables, you're ready to write it in the form of a research question. How does the independent variable affect the dependent variable. Given that, and you might need to be specific with some of your control variables. So for example, in mine, how does the wavelength of light affect the amount of refraction given that I'm using a piece of calcite to create double refraction? You might have to massage the grammar around to make your question work well, but it really should be in the form of a question. 
Okay, now here's another check before we get to writing the method. There's a difference in science between the words reliable, accurate, and precise. In everyday English, they might be considered synonyms, but we really do have a difference for our experiments. Reliable, I like to think about is, if a different person on a different day did the experiment, will you get the same result? If you have something that's very easily changed, then you're not going to be able to make a generalized statement of the outcome. It would be very specific to that particular trial. So we would like to be able to make these generalized statements at the end, so we need to have a reliable method. If you talk about the value being accurate, it means that the value you have measured is close to the real or accepted value. It's not possible to be perfect, but we'd like to be close to the real value. Now precise can have two different meanings. For a single measurement, we're talking about how many decimal places you have. In other words, how many small little lines are on your ruler. Is it every centimeter or every millimeter? Every millimeter will be more precise. For a collection of measurements, we want to know how close the results are together. And I've got an example to help us. So let's use the analogy of a bullseye. We're going to assume that we really do want to be aiming for the center of the bullseye. That means it's going to be the most accurate if you actually hit the center. So in this bottom right hand corner you can see that all of the shots are close together and in the center. That means it's going to be both highly accurate and highly precise. In comparison, this one in the top right corner, you see how all of the shots are very close together. That means there's a high amount of precision, but because it's not where it's supposed to be, there is a low accuracy. Now if there's any science that you've had to use so far that is not straightforward, we need to actually make sure the reader of our report will be able to understand where we're coming from, the science behind the experiment. I like to think of your IA as a story. So this part is like setting the scene. Your variables are the character in the story, and we want to know where it's set or any kind of things that are happening in the background that will guide our method. One thing our IAs do not have to be is a scripted and very dry, now do your research question, now put this, now put this. You want to have signposts and help the reader through, but it really should be more of a story and a flow rather than choppy, cut and paste, I'm reading a recipe. Okay, so now let's finally think about the method. You've got your independent variable, you've got your dependent variable, you know what you're having to do to measure it, and all the things that need to stay the same. One thing you want to think about is your independent variable should be manipulated at least five times. So in my example, I'm going to need to use five different wavelengths in order to do my experiment. We also want to take the measurements of our dependent variable at least three times. That way, if there's any variation in our data, we can take that into account in our analysis. If there's going to be a lot of variation and our experiment is easily reproduced, we should do more than that. If you watch one of my other videos on analyzing data, you'll see that I actually did each one five times, giving me 25 pieces of data. Don't forget, if you told me something needed to be controlled in that chart, it should be obvious in your method that it is being controlled. For example, if I've said that temperature needs to be controlled, then I better have something in my method saying that I'm doing it in my lab at a certain temperature, or if I'm out in the side, I'm going to use you know the same day and I'm going to write down what temperature it was outside. Sometimes when we're going through, it's going to be very difficult to explain how to take your measurements. And I do recommend as you're working through that you take photos 
as you're working. It's a lot easier to remind yourself of what you're doing. Now in your actual report, you might use the photo or you might create a diagram. It really depends on how easy it is to see the photo. Most times a diagram will be easier to follow. I also want you to think about this as more of a methodology rather than just a method. In other words, why did you choose the certain apparatus? Why did it get set up a specific way? This will really go to show your personal engagement and how you have designed this experiment. You can see I've put the last bullet point in quotes. The report shows evidence of awareness of the significant safety, ethical, or environmental issues that are relevant to the methodology of the investigation. If your experiment has something that could be considered dangerous, it must be discussed. For example, if I was using a laser, I would need to explain safety procedures that I would use for using a laser. If I was taking a toy car and rolling it down a hill, well, odds are there's nothing really unsafe about that. I don't have to worry about a little tin car running into me causing bodily harm. So just use your common sense about whether or not it should be included. Adding in a statement saying there's no safety issues with this experiment is sufficient. In this case physics is much less strict than if you were doing biology or chemistry. Now designing your IA and writing it up aren't ex the same thing. In the design, I talk about doing your variables, then the research question, telling me about your method, and then go back and write your materials. You don't actually have to include a list of materials in your report. We're looking for quality, not quantity. So if I was starting to write up my IA so far, this is the actual order of the report because the person reading it is different from me designing it. I'd start off with my research question and then set my story. Write my background to explain the science that's going to be needed. In my example, I might state Snell's law, but I wouldn't prove it from the very beginning, though I might suggest why I think the refractive index would change with wavelength. Also, you don't necessarily want to give the plot away in your story in the first paragraph. So you want to describe the background, but leave the actual proof of it to your analysis and conclusions. I would then put variables and my method and make sure if you had to change it along the way, this method should be the one that you actually performed, not necessarily your original plan. One thing I want to remind you about is that this syllabus does not have a section in our rubric about personal engagement. There should be no section titled personal engagement. It should be obvious through your work that this is your idea and you have creativity, innovation, and initiative in doing your report.